Hello and welcome to another episode of me trying to build this Intamin LSM with a spooky steampunk alpine kind of theme as far as I can actually do that. And as of recording this, it's the 1st of January, so I hope you've all had a great time with Christmas and uh, Happy New Year, of course. And sorry, excuse me if I do sound a bit sleepy today because, of course, I didn't really go to bed at my regular bad time yesterday. And waking up wasn't all that great either. But it's time to pick up Rollercoaster 3 again because I haven't done that in a, quite a while and this is kind of an old recording. But anyway, I should probably talk about what I'm doing. So I figured that I would go ahead and just build stuff in this area. Basically, I wanted to fill this up with as much stuff that, as I could. So I, I decided to just go crazy and just let my imagination do whatever it wanted to do. And first thing I decided to do is to just add a little building over there because I am afraid of the emptiness and I just wanted something everywhere. I also decided, but I'm going to show that later on, that uh, to build three large towers, all kind of still inspired by that Professor Layton kind of thing where you get the kind of crooked, spooky buildings. But of course, I do want to keep in the steampunk and alpine influences from the rest of the park. So yeah, that's basically what's going to happen today. And I decided to add these vines because I just saw this set and I was like, Damn, I haven't used this set in years. I remember that when it, it was like 2010, 2010 or 2011 when everybody was using this and placing it on supports, but I haven't seen it too often um, lately, especially because there are newer Vine sets, but I, I just decided to see if I could do something with this set and it actually turned out to be pretty useful. So yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm just going to go with that and this was basically me trying to build those vines everywhere because I, I figured that I could go for a kind of abandoned look because I have no idea what such a weird spooky manner kind of whatever this building even is because I have no clue this is honestly it's just about the um, aesthetics over here it's not too serious it's not too realistic I just decided to let myself go with stuff it's kind of like doodling in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 whereas you're not really going for a realistic theme but more for the details and just things in general and yeah it's just it's just about the looks and whatever you can come up with at the spot and that's also how doodling works so I think I do kind of see a well connection when it comes to that and I like doodling so I like doing this in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 as well but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm drifting off. Basically, I just decided to build that path over over there. I've, I still have no clue what to actually do with that. And I'm still procrastinating that because I suck at planning things. I don't know if you guys have that as well, but I'm really bad at actually getting a start. As, as soon as I've started building something, it's not that hard for me. But just to get that start, just to um, get that basic idea in my head and kind of put that in Rollercoaster Token 3 and then move on to all the details is what's the hardest thing for me. But yeah, adding details is something that I do enjoy and I think I don't really have too many difficulties with. So I just decided to add some more details to these buildings because I just picked up some new sets where I didn't actually pick them up. I had to get them because of collaborations and stuff. And even though most of the times when I record videos for other people or pictures or do collaborations, I'm quite bothered to actually get all of the sets that they um, got me because I needed them, of course, to open their park files. But then again, it is pretty cool to have some new sets that I've never used before. And sometimes it really does help. And just scrolling through a new set and looking at all of the pieces is something that I also enjoy. The only problem that I have with this, which is not really a problem, but it's a minor nuisance, is the fact that it doesn't really deliver the best time lapses. And I realize that time lapsing something like this is very different from time lapsing a building, which I already have a very clear idea in my head, or doing foliage, or doing rock work, or um, building coasters. Building coasters is probably the best thing to time lapse, or even to not time lapse. It's Probably the most exciting thing to watch. But this is just the kind of moment where you need to experience uh, what a set uh, works like and where you kind of need to mess around with it. And it's more like trial and error and experimentalism than it really is something building and something that's very fit for doing a time lapse. So yeah, doing that experimental stuff is kind of what I'm doing in this episode. And this tower, however, it wasn't so experimental because it was, of course, inspired by another tower that I know. But then again, it's something I've never ever done in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3. I don't think I've ever seen it in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 really. But I think it turned out pretty pretty decent, yeah. And I don't think it's too unrealistic because before I 
had that idea to build um, a tower like that, that kind of crook tower that looks like it's about to collapse but doesn't really collapse, is the problem that it might look very unrealistic, especially in Professor Layton where the tower is nearly levitating and just looks unnatural. I decided that I would want something like that and I'm not going for a realistic park in the sense that any, no park would actually build scenery like this. It's way too expensive, even Disney wouldn't do that. But I do want to keep the basic realism, I don't want to negate gravity or anything like that. So just to keep that basic realism in there is something that I do need to keep in mind. And that was something that I was worried about when building that, when building that building, but I do think it looks okay. I think it looks realistic enough. And yeah, other other than that, this is all just scrolling through sets and looking at things and just thinking, hmm, I might add that. And I do realize that, I, I might give this as a tip also to myself, but I just keep forgetting about this. If you do this, if you just scroll through sets and look at details that you want to add to buildings, don't do what I do and do it for just a couple of buildings of which you still want to build more. But first, finish all of the buildings that you want to do in that style and then do all of the very tiny details if you want to try that. Because if you do it earlier on and you still need to add a couple more buildings, you're gonna forget which sets you got all of those small pieces from or it's gonna take a very long time. And if you just do the basic shapes of buildings first and then finish all of that and then move on to the details, it's actually uh, a lot more efficient and less annoying in the long run. Only I am an idiot and I just keep forgetting my own tips and stuff like that. So that's why I didn't do that. But don't be me to bleh, do that. Holy shit, I haven't had enough sleep today. Nope. So yeah, I don't really know what else I'm going to do with this area though. I've been saying for a very long time that I would add a kids area or more flat rides or something around this. But I honestly have no clue how I'm going to do that. And I also have no clue how I'm going to do the foliage, because I do kind of want to try some spooky-ish foliage. But then again, if you do that, it's most likely going to be unrealistic, or it's going to have a different season than the rest of the park. And I don't really want that, because once again, this park is unrealistic, but I do want to keep basic uh, rules of realism, of course. So I'm not going to build multiple seasons forests over the, here in this park. That wouldn't make too much sense. And this is the part where I get to building the three towers, by the way. I suppose I'm not too sure about them. I think I'll let them stay, but if you really don't want that, I don't know. I don't have any other ideas. This was kind of the basic idea that I had. And I wanted to go for a spooky-ish skyline. I don't think that makes too much sense uh, or is ever done before. But I just I, I like skylines and... Maybe experimenting with stuff and building some different things than usual might seem like a great idea. But of course, the only only risk with these towers is that I had no clue how this is going to look. And I still don't have a clue. And this might end up looking unrealistic and weird and ugly. Which I don't hope. And I also don't think. But I'll, I, I guess I'll have to see when the park is finished. But yeah, other than that, I think... I'll just need to add a couple of small buildings around this area just to kind of cover up all of the emptiness because I'm afraid of the emptiness. And I need to finish the station because the station has a very slight idea-ish kind of concept and some floating roofs but nothing more. And I definitely need to get around to actually finish that. And this is where I mess with the foliage. I try to use the same kinds of sets that I've used in the rest of the park and mix in a couple of dead trees and I do feel like that does make a bit of sense but I've no clue how to actually make it more spooky. The only thing that I can think of is actually getting um, some of the dead trees and stuff from um, Fisher's Enchanted Forest but I've no clue how that is actually going to look because it's a very magical-ish set and it does have some weird fantasy-ish pieces but I guess I'll see at some point. And anyway, this is the end of the episode, so thank you for watching, and see you in the next one, in which I'm going to do something. I have no clue, actually.